America's most genial quiz master, Mr. Jimmy Popular. Hello there, 50 million Americans. Thank you for letting us come into your living room so that we can break your brains. Tonight, we welcome back some of the last week's contestants. You're going to meet... Ronald Gordon, our eight-year-old atomic scientist who's an expert on comic books. <laughs> You're going to meet... Mrs. Marjorie Barnes, our 93-year-old grandmother from St. Louis, Missouri, whose category is pole vaulting. <laughs> and you'll meet... Rudolph Schmidt, our baker from Wyzetta, Minnesota, whose category is bakeries in Wyzetta, Minnesota. <laughs> and now our lovely hostess, Miss Penny Candy, will bring in tonight's first contestant, the man whose brain we've been trying to break for 25 consecutive weeks, the man whose category is... Anything. The man who tonight goes for a quarter of a million dollars, Mr. Harry Hempstead. Mr. Hempstead is a little nervous after 25 weeks on our show. So, Penny, will you escort Mr. Hempstead down the brain ramp? It's been a hard 25 weeks for Harry. Harry? Jimmy, here again is Mr. Harry Hempstead. <laughs> well, Harry... I bet you've been doing a lot of stuff. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you very much. No more, no more. Please. Now, please, Harry. Harry, you're going. Remember, I bet you're very nervous after 25 weeks on Break Your Brains. Would you tell the audience some of the things that have been happening to you since the show began? Well, ever since I've been winning all this money on the show, people have been so nice to me. I was interviewed on the radio. They have made an announcement about me in my hometown paper. And I've been beaten up once and robbed twice. <laughs> the show has done a lot for me. Harry, everybody in America... <laughs> Watch it. Everybody in America knows what you do, Harry, but for the new listeners, would you tell them what you do for a living? I'm a quiz master on another show. <laughs> it's back in my hometown. I run a little quiz show in a garage. That's right, Harry. There are a lot of us these days. <laughs> Well, I've right. studied enough. I can't take it. Please, Harry, time. please, Harry. Remember, you're going for a quarter of a million dollars. Now, Harry, remember, this is, comes time for the big decision. You can take this check for a quarter of a million dollars and go home, or you can try to answer the next question and win this quarter of a million dollars. Would you rather take it or win it? <laughs> I'll try to win it. <laughs> Sam, sound foolhardy to a lot of people, but that shows a lot of courage on your part. Now, let's tell the folks at home how we play the game. Mr. Hempstead has reached the $250,000 precipice by answering correctly all of his questions. Now, Mr. Hempstead, you can go on to the next ravine by selling half your jackpot bank and which you can ensure your entire winnings by investing your $250,000 in your children's college future. Or you can take $250,000 of matched luggage with your little name embossed <laughs> on the envelopes. Now, in which case, we'll give you one hard or five easy questions which will entitle you to the jackpot prize. Therefore, you stand a chance, Harry Hempstead, of parlaying your $250,000 into $12.5 a week for the next full month. <laughs> Figure, but if you answer every question correctly, you'll have a, meet, a right to meet your contender who will challenge your right to take the prizes home. Is that clear, Mr. Hempstead? Uh, Is it clear, sir? Uh, uh, yeah, yes. Yes, Jimmy, it's clear. And Jimmy, may I say that you're a wonderfully fine person. And uh, people ask me, is he really nice as he is? And I tell them, how else could he be if he weren't? You're nice. Well, that's nice to hear, Harry, but I'm being what I am. I can't help it. A lot of nice people working on the show, plus the fact that I'm nice to begin with, makes this a very rewarding job, Harry. You certainly are. You too, Harry. And the same to you. And now we're ready to get on with the game. Now get set for part two of the rules, the outdoor event. As everyone knows, last week's loser is this week's outdoor event. 
Check. Right at this moment, Mr. William James Hewlett III, our Wall Street financier, who was our expert on social grace and etiquette, is walking around the streets of New York in his underwear. And right now he's buying a ticket for a movie. Now, if any time during the time you are being questioned, he is thrown out of the movie or arrested, or anyone notices that he's wearing underwear, whichever comes first, you'll have to stop where you are and go for the bonus question. You'll lose everything you've learned thus far, plus your fact you'll have to pay for Mr. Hewlett's fine, his court fees, and his lawyer fee. So let's cut to our outdoor event and see how he's coming. We take you to 42nd Street and Broadway. <laughs> well, you're lucky, Harry. They haven't spotted him yet. Now, Harry Hempstead, we're ready to break your brains. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Harry Hempstead, who has reached the first crevice on his climb to a quarter of a million dollar ravine. Miss Penny, will you push the Selectatron button tron? <laughs> University. May we have the question, please? Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor White. Now, Hardy, please, Professor, Professor White, please. Please, Professor White. Thank you. Now, Harry, your category is anything. And here is your first question. We are going to play an excerpt from an opera. We're going to ask you to name the excerpt. You have 15 seconds. All right, let's hear it, Bernie. Now, for a quarter of a million dollars, we are going to ask you to answer that question. You have 15 seconds, and take every minute of those 15 seconds. All right. Please don't help him. Nobody help him. Please. Please don't help him. Harry, what is the name of that aria? <laughs> Karanomi. Right. Karanomi is right. <laughs> All right, Harry. You've answered part one. And now for the second part of your last ditch question. You must answer this for the $250,000. From what opera is Karanomi taken? Name the five leading tenors who sang the leading role before 1930. Name the opera companies which these tenors sang. In which cities these opera companies are located? And at least four out of five leading ladies who sang the leading roles opposite the leading tenors. Name the composer of the work of at least five unpublished operas of his. Then name his wife and the first names of his children. You have 15 seconds to give me your answer. Take every minute of those 15 seconds, Harry. <laughs> Your answer. First answer is, it's come, the aria comes from Rigoletto. It was first sung by Enrico Caruso, then sung by Benny Benigio Giannino. Then it's sung by Giannino Bellini, Caruso, Calacastro, Salavani, Piccolozzo Perino, and then John Pierce. Quirino Zamora, Carolo Balsinio, Tony Galento, Dami Dinesio. It was first played at the Metropolitan Opera Company, the Los Scala de San Carlos, Sal Magli, the Sal Magli Live Opera, the Chicago Live Opera Company, the Detroit Heavy Opera Company, the St. Louis Municipal Opera Company, the St. Paul Muni Opera Company, the Rome Opera Company, the Napa Company. It was first played in 1801, 1802, 1803. We read for a period of 1955, 1836, 1844. No, no, 1995. 1936, 1904, 1945. And it was first sung. The leading ladies were Louisa Teresa, Amelia Teresa, Amelia Gluck, Maria Angela, Dolores, the Rio, Maris, the Bess Meyerson. And no, no, that's not. Robinson Clausen. 
It was written by Verdi. It's unpublished twice, so I go in it to the more I need it to Nina, the printer, the Santa Maria, the Crystal of the Little Jose. question used 250 seconds at a thousand dollars a second which brings you to a grand total of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and here harry is your two hundred and fifty thousand one two fifty thousand dollars in cash like that well harry you can take that money home with you now or go on to your next cliff and meet your contender who can take it all away from you i'll go on remember harry you can't win any more money. You can just lose what you have. I'll go on. <laughs> Harry, you're a grand sport. And I want you to meet your contender, our charming housewife, Mrs. Blanche Stanley. <laughs> Mrs. Stanley, how many weeks have you been on Break Your Brains? 103 weeks. Has it been that long? Oh, yes. I was here before you were. Oh, that's right. <laughs> You were on when I came on. Well, yes, how, how much money have you won on this quiz show? On this show? Yes. Well, on this show, I paid about, mm, about a million dollars. A million dollars. Do you find that all this money has changed you at all? Oh, no. <laughs> Good heavens to Betsy, no. No, we haven't changed in the least little bit. We're exactly the same. <laughs> of course, our friends seem a little poorer and a little duller, but we haven't changed. Well, that's wonderful to hear that, Mrs. Stanley. Yes. It's time to play the game, and I want you to meet your contender, Harry Hempstead. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? I hope you'll lose. Thank you very much. <laughs> that's the spirit. And now we're ready for the big payoff question, the question that's worth half a million dollars on Break Your Brains. Penny and Professor White, will you show the contestants to the humiliation booths? <laughs> You're not allowed to take an expert in with you this oh, time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Harry. Thank you, Professor White. Thank you very much. Yes, Sound I, on. Yes, I can. I can hear you. How about you, Mr. Hempstead? Can you hear me? Is the sound on, Mr. Hempstead? Is the sound on? The sound is on. The air is off. The air is off. Now, Mr. Stanley, here's the big question. We've turned the sound off of Mr. Hempstead's booth so he can't hear. Are you ready? Yes, I can hear you. All right, for a half a million dollars, will you name the capitals of the following eight countries? Abyssinia, Uruguay, Bolivia, Paraguay, New Zealand, Newfoundland, Belgium, and Pakistan. You have 15 seconds to think of your answer and take every minute of those seconds. <laughs> the name of the capital of the countries of Abyssinia. The capital of Abyssinia. Uh, could we skip that one and go on to the next one, please? Certainly, the capital of Uruguay. The capital, uh, could we go back to Abyssinia? All right, the capital of Abyssinia. I think I'll try Belgium. All right, how about Belgium? Belgium. Um, uh, oh, you know it, Mrs. Stanley. I do. Oh, of course you do. <laughs> well, then, good, let's skip that one and go on to the next one. All right, the capital of Pakistan. Uh, the capital, could we try Belgium again? <laughs> and... oh! Sorry, oh. Mrs. Stanley, but your time is up. We have busted your brain, so will you please get off the stage? Oh, get off the stage. Oh, Thank you, Mrs. Stanley. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, before we turn the sound off in Mr. Hempstead's booth, we have a surprise for him. From Durango, California, we have flown his father in, who he hasn't seen in 30 years. Now, if he answers the question correctly, he and his father will have a wonderful reunion and a joyous reunion. However, if he misses the question, we'll put his father back on the plane and he will never see him again. <laughs> Aren't we having fun, America? All right, Mr. Hempstead, put the sound back in, Mr. Hempstead. The air, the air, put the air back in. <laughs> Mr. Hempstead. 
Here is your question. Here is your question for the grand prize. Will you bring in the paintings, please? Mr. Hempstead, we have here 10 works of art. Five of these works of art are the originals. And five of these works of art, five of these works of art are copies. They are forged copies. Will you take these with you, Mr. Hempstead? Mr. Hempstead, there you are. Your question is, determine, determine, Mr. Hempstead, the originals, and determine the name of the painter, the, na the names of the painter, and the name of the painting. You have 15 seconds to determine it. number one yes I have the painting number one this is uh, this is by, by Van Borns it's called Le Raisin de la Paramount which in English means sneaking into the Paramount that's right <laughs> now Mr. Hempstead we've got to go fast we've got 15 seconds painting number two yes this is this is the original it says it's either a Mo or a Freg de Liani I think it's a Mo de Liani and it's called Passive coconuts in the breeze. Passive coconuts in the breeze is right. Number three. Yes. Here is the third original. It's called The Drowning Swan, and it's by Rual Pestilence. It is The Drowning Swan by Rual Pestilence. And it's by his adopted son. Right. That's absolutely right. Number four. And this, this is The Cavalry Charge by Sir William S. Retreat. That's absolutely correct. That's right. Now, the number five painting. Number five painting. This is, I know this one, it's, it's, um, 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 uh, yeah, it's, it's a Van Dyke. It's, it's Van Dyke's immortal still life called Soup and Greens. Soup and Greens is right! You have won, Mr. Hanson! Larry Hanson, you've won the half a million dollars. One, two, three, four, five, and you'll be back with us next week for the million dollar question. No, I, I won't be able to be back with you next week because I'm on a different quiz show called Beat Your Wife. Oh, yes, of course. You're on Beat Your Wife, the quiz show whose losers become our contenders who meet the contestants to challenge the contestants of the winners who become our losers. That's right. Well, good luck, Harry, and I hope that you beat your wife. Don't worry, I'll beat her brains out. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned for the next five quiz shows which follow on this station immediately. Well, good night and break your brains, ladies and gentlemen. Good night.